Hey, let me go to John. John did call back. Uh, hey, John. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Good. I have uh, had the opportunity to start listening to you for about the last uh, 30, 45 days as I drive to work. And I haven't listened to all of your programs or all of your callers, so I'm going to apologize in advance if I've got a, a mistaken impression. No but point. it seems to me like um, when folks call in, um, you're sort of steering them away from using financial advisors and trying to do this themselves. Mm -hmm. And where I work, and I've worked there for about 30 years, getting ready to retire, I've been involved in the retirement plan for years, and I've just found so many of the folks that try to do it themselves, they're not emotionally disciplined enough. Amen they to that. don't know how to balance the portfolio, Amen. and yet they're always looking at newsletters and they're talking about who they talk to on a telephone, and yet I've got a financial advisor I've used for 25 years, and we've done great. And right. I, I just, I just L yeah, want let to see if that's the direction that, no, that no. we're going it isn't, John. Let me let me clarify that. And I, I talk about this at my town hall meetings. Um, in my opinion, there's to, it's always better to have a trusted financial advisor. Always, always. Um, if you have a financial advisor, or you know of a financial advisor that has your best interest at heart, that's a really good one that is going to do right by you on a regular basis that you trust, you feel good about. Um, I would never, I wouldn't leave that person. I wouldn't, you know, I'd stick with it. And that's who I would use. And it's in, it, extremely important because, first of all, people that have financial advisors do about 32% better than people that don't. I use this uh, at my town hall meeting. Here's the reason why. Not because they're smart not because they particularly do a great job. I hope that's some of the reason. I know it is. I was a financial advisor for many, many years managing hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, I wasn't a, you know, I, was, I had my own trust company. I wasn't attached to a mutual fund company or anything like that. But the reason why you do better is because a good advisor holds your hand through the bad times and through the bad news. They keep you on course they keep doing, you know, they keep you doing what you're doing. And that's why people generally over their lifetime do better with an advisor. So I'm all for it. But here's the thing. Some years ago, um, even though I've come out of that industry, I don't recommend financial advisors and I won't anymore because I find that every time I've done that, I've gotten burnt because they don't do what they say they're going to do. So, uh, but I always try to make a point to say that's the minority, not the majority. Now, I also, and you may hear me say this from time to time, I don't, I consider a good insurance guy a good insurance guy. And if you can't buy individual stocks, if you can't trade individual stocks, if you're not doing options and some of the other issues that you might want to do, I, I, are you just an insurance guy with great products um, that is holding yourself out as a financial advisor. Now, I'm a little biased. I'm a Wall Street guy. I'm a stock guy. Um, you know, I have to admit that. Um, but, you know, so I may, I may talk about that. The only reason, well, there's two reasons, that I've established my partnership on my website was to address what you've already mentioned, and you're absolutely 100% right on it, was number one, it's, uh, a, it, it's, it's a source of support for the ministry, and that's, you know, that's one of the reasons. But since I am no longer managing, that I manage institutional money and some endowment money and some charitable trust money, private, and I'm, I'm still able to do that. But if you don't, I tell people that are using my website advice, just don't ever waver from the discipline. I say it all the time because it's the discipline that makes it successful. If I have something on my buy list, don't buy something off my broad list if it's not on my buy list. Uh, and, you know, that's not how it you got. And when I say to sell it, sell it. And, and uh, 
you know, don't buy anything, whether you don't like it or not, don't buy it unless it's on my buy list. And then if you already own it, certainly you can buy it on dips, buy more of it on dips, whether it's on my buy list or not. I have a whole, you know, I have these videos on there that explains to you how, not how to manage money. It's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach people how to use my website to manage their money if they choose to do that. Um, I also have a video in there on choosing a financial advisor because I believe that there's nothing wrong with having a financial advisor. Now, if you're going to go into mutual funds, then you can put them in mutual funds and hang out there for the rest of your life and probably do okay. But um, so I'm all for financial advisors. I don't have any issues with it I, as long as they're a good one. And when they're bad, I say so. But when I meet with financial advisors and clients at the same time, I just had this happen in, in Texas. When I do that, before I ever look at any portfolios or statements, I talk to them for a while, talk to everybody for a while, and then I tell them exactly what they have and what they're doing. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm right. Then I say, all right, let me look at the portfolio, and I'm usually dead on the money. Because everybody's doing the same thing and everybody's saying the same thing for the most part. So not every, I shouldn't say everybody, but the vast majority. It's very, very predictable. So, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with it. And again, I go back to the statistic. If you have, like you do, John, you apparently do. If you have a trusted advisor, man, that is the best way to go. It's somebody that knows you, knows you, and is able to... Um, uh, you know, work towards your goals and objectives uh, in a way that is going to be helpful to you because they know what your goals and objectives are. They know your risk tolerances. They know all those things. Uh, and it, it works out great. Um, to be biblically responsible, if that's an issue for people, it gets even harder to then have a financial advisor. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of issues in and around that, but all in all, I'm not against it. Never have been. I uh, don't know that I ever will be. So, Well, number one, I'm very glad I made the phone call. It gives me a lot more confidence to turn it on every morning and listen to you, and, and uh, you have a great ministry. I do appreciate it. I look forward to it when I get in the car on my way, way to work. So uh, once Thank again, you. thanks for the explanation. I think it's super, uh, and I'm glad I made the phone call. Thank you. Good. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, and, and the other thing is, I forgot to mention to John, but the other thing is, folks, some of the it, opinion, I'm going to say, I don't, I'm not going to say advice, some of the opinion that I give, uh, even uh, in reference to a stock pick, that's something you can carry to your financial advisor and say, hey, look, what do you think? You know, I have this guy, he's got, uh, you know... XYZ stock on his list and he was talking about it. It sounds pretty good. What do you think about it? I mean, it gives you an opportunity to interact and, and to work. One of the things that I always tell people to do, man, you need to know what you have you, and you need to understand it. And it gives you an opportunity to interact with your advisor so that you can understand things uh, and know what you have. And that's always good. So anyway, good stuff. Thanks, John. I appreciate the call.